we've been to our, our last parent coffee. You know, we try to do about four parent coffees per grade per year. Sometimes one of them is combined seventh and eighth grade. It's a little bit different topics sometimes between seventh and eighth, and then sometimes some ones that we pull together. And really, a big part of it is just to give you an opportunity to come in and again, so what you were just doing, like you were just talking over a cup of coffee, and it's an opportunity to really meet other parents, talk to other parents. Um, about things that are going on. So, we'll get to topic. Today's topic is um, just the religion curriculum. Because if you remember from the uh, parent back to school night back in September, because your sons weren't taking religion in the first semester, you didn't have an opportunity to hear anything about the religion curriculum and talk to the religion teachers. So, we'll give that opportunity today. But I want to just kind of go through a couple things that are going on. Um, so, the semester ends next week. The last day of classes for the September, this semester are is next Wednesday. Um, and then on Thursday, all the students will take a math exam that'll be in the morning. And then for the guys who are in music this semester, if they're in a performing performance class, they have their concert at noon on Thursday. And then the drama showdown will also take place that day, which the boys from the drama class and some of you, some of your sons might have drama back in September, October, some sort of October, November, and some are just finishing up now. But they, depending on the section, they've done either scenes or monologues as their final project, and they chose the, the best one or two from each, maybe three, at least two, from each section, and they'll perform those in front of the whole division. It's, it's been a nice tradition. We started about five, six years ago. Um, and then the eighth graders do uh, their scenes uh, at the end of the, the, end of the year drama show. Um, so that's going on. We've got uh, uh, the grades will come out. Uh, students will see them in a long advisory. They'll go over their, their grades with their advisors on Friday, January the 31st. And then we'll make them live to the parents probably sometime that afternoon. Uh, the, so this is the, re the report card, it's just the grades. Parish reports, there were comments as well. The report card, it's just the grades. Um, and then, uh, starting on January 27th, your sons will either, will all be in religion groups. Eighth grades will switch to your drama, art, or um, health. Seventh grades will all take religion. A um, couple other things going on. Just as we're at the end of the semester, uh, we, had a, we had a meeting earlier, I think, November parent coffee on some grade the team classes. And just to remind, you know, with those, those grades are sort of complete or incomplete or things where they have to P's and we need to get them up to M's. There's been a lot going on over the last two weeks since we've been back, we've been since we've been back on vacation with team classes to say, look through, make your list, what are the things that you still have outstanding, what are the things that you still need to redo, retake, what are the things where, hey, you still have a, a weakness in, this is the time to do it. So now sometimes, so that's happening probably daily in those classes. We often have students that tell the parents, I have no idea. No idea this was going on. So just, just want you to just reinforce it, it, they have an idea. It is going on. They're going through it. It's a little harder from the parent point of view to see exactly what's going on. But I just want to show you. And it's good to say that, hey, what is it that you still need to be working on? And, and again, I'm doing that with some of my advisees seeing them in the morning and saying, what are you working on? What do you still need to do? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Really? Um, no, I'm, I'm fine. And then, oh yeah, no, I do have a couple things to do. Okay, so you could be play, you're playing Fortnite right now. What could you be doing? I guess I could go get that packet from Lucy Lucy. Yes, you could go get the packet from Lucy So these things are happening. Uh, again, some of the guys are so set, they know exactly what they need to do, and they've got their list, and they check it off, boom, boom, boom. And other guys, the organization is a little different. A couple other things, we've got a dance. Our next dance is on Friday, January 31st. So, um, we'll, we're starting out with announcements. I think today is the first day we put in the announcements. They're fun. Um, they can invite, if they have friends who are female or in seventh grade grade, they can invite up to three of them. Um, sometimes they get a call from a neighbor who says, hey, you're taking the three of us. He just needs to come if he's doing that. Some of the guys say, oh yeah, I'll sign the voucher and then they stay home and play a video game with the girls in here. Yep, he's supposed to be here. So uh, an opportunity to say, hey, why don't you have a couple guys back over, you know, for sleepover afterward. What? Why would I do that? 
do that. But, but, but again, sometimes that happens, it's a, it's a nice thing, and sometimes the car ride home is pretty fun because they were all so awkward together at the dance that they're having a fun time about it. So just, you know, just throwing that out there. And the last thing I just want to say is, we're speaking, we're talking a lot right now about with the boys about how we treat each other. Um, you know, we work with, with adolescents, kids getting into adolescence. Um, and it's, it's an odd time in everyone's life as they approach out and start adolescence. And a couple of the young know, they are learning about the power of their words. And we're learning that there's real, there is real power in the world. And they're learning is also, they have much more physical power somewhere than they had a year ago, or six months ago, or last week. Um, but they often lack the overall understanding of how to use those things well. And the good thing is, they learn from experience. The bad thing is, those experiences often hurt other people. And, and we try to, you know, again, navigate that um, and help them navigate that. And some of them, you know, some of them are approaching that in seventh grade, and some of them won't even, they won't even get there until the right or tenth grade. Um, so it's a, it's a weird continuum. So a couple of things, you know, on, on, on Monday morning and morning meeting, I talk to them about um, how do you, you know, just, we joke a lot. We joke a lot back and forth as friends, and Sometimes we say things and it's funny, and, but it's very easy to cross over that line with our, with our friends or with our, with our classmates. I mean, we don't know that well. And what do you do when you cross over the line? You have to apologize. You have to just say, hey, I'm sorry, and you have to step back and you have to acknowledge that. And you know, and I said, hey, and when someone steps over the line with you, you've got to be able to say, hey, that was over the line. And trying to get them to be aware of it, because they are going to step over the line all the time. And, and we're, we're trying to get them some awareness of that. Yesterday we had an advisory activity on empathy. Um, and trying to get them to, you know, what does it mean to think about how someone else is feeling? What does it mean to think about someone else's experiences? Now I can tell you with my advisory group, and I had, um, my former partner was, was sick yesterday, so I actually had both the advisory groups together, so it's a little bit different than our normal circle. Uh, their focus was not there where I needed it to be. Um, but we, eventually, one of the things I did, I had to sort of change it on the fly, is I said, hey, give me the names of the people on campus who you think are the nicest people, the people who more, most frequently make you feel good about yourselves. And they got that, that they were easy, able to identify that. And then I said, all right, what is it that they do that makes you feel good about yourself? What, what are some of the things that they do? And they were very good at identifying those things. And we put those things up on the board. Because originally the question had been, you know, the big ending question was, what can we do to improve our community? And I just realized where my guys were right there, that sort of big open-ended question wasn't going anywhere. So, but that they were able to put those things up and say, that this, is what, this is what those really nice people do. This is what they do to make me feel good about myself. And so when, once we got those up there, I said, let's take a picture of this. Everyone take a picture of this whenever I've had to look. And right, let, I'm going to bring that up with them in my homeroom repeatedly to say, hey, how are we doing on this? Are we getting better? Um, you know, what are the things we need to work on? And I think what I'm probably going to do is the next time we have a morning meeting, which will be not until the 27th, is bring that list up with the whole group. And just, you know, again, it's, there's no magic one thing we can do to make every student be perfect behavior every day. And it's just a constant reminder um, of the things that they can do, trying to find different ways to reach them and get them to think about it. And you know, that's, and we go through periods of the year where everything goes pretty smoothly, and then periods of the year where they're, they're grumpy, they're tired, no one, no one acts their best when they're grumpy, they're tired, and stuff like that. So we, we work through it. But I just want to sort of you be aware, those are some of the things we have going on now. now Today, we're back to, so the idea to tell you is going to give it a chance for you to, to hear a little bit about the religion curriculum. So all the seventh grade boys will start on Monday the 27th with religion class. They'll have religion class for the, the whole year, the whole semester, um, and then they'll have it for the first semester of eighth grade. And many of our students, have, most of our students have probably never taken a religion class before. 
Um, many of our students are not Catholic in a Catholic school. Many of our students are not religious in any way coming, coming into the school. So what we want to do is just kind of give you an opportunity. Some people think, some kids come in and say, there's no way I can at all pass religion class because I've never taken, you know, I've never taken religion. And that's, that has nothing to do with it. Do with it. Um, so give you an opportunity. What I want to do is introduce our religion teachers. So right back here, um, half of your sons will have Miss Felice. And then the other half, we're supposed to have Dr. Horning. And Dr. Horning in October had to take a leave um, for a family situation, which he thought he'd be back around Thanksgiving. It now has turned out he's not going to be back until next year. So once we knew that, sort of in December, we looked around to try to figure out what, what's the best situation. Um, and fortunately, Mrs. Solano back there. Mrs. Solano is a fantastic religion teacher who worked in our high school for <coughs> years. She is, um, <laughs> and she's got yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Solano is um, right now teaching in the high school covering a maternity leave for one of the other religion teachers who's coming back about February vacation. So then, okay, then what do we do from January 27th to February vacation? And right on cue, Father Nolan. So Father Nolan, who uh, taught uh, 7th grade religion last year in the Urufe Division, taught one section, um, and was much, much to our disadvantage, taken away by the admissions office to work for admissions this year. Um, he has stepped up, he's dying to get back in the classroom, so he's going to take those sections. Um, for the three weeks or so between the start of the semester and when um, Ms. Maxie comes back and Ms. Solano can come over. So I think we actually have a fantastic <laughs> situation uh, after worrying about it for quite some time. So I'm going to turn this over to the three of them. Um, I'm, usually I stay around after the parent coffee. I have to be somewhere this morning, but Mrs. Hornby's here as well, so feel free to join and hang out afterwards. Um, so hi, uh, my name is Margaret Felice. And um, I'm in so much trouble with Mr. Hamlet for being late. I also direct um, uh, the liturgical choir, and sometimes we'll have obligations like on the weekend, and I'll say, oh, we have to clock back, and the kids will say, well, when's it going to be over? And I'm like, I don't know. Mass is always like a different length. It could be. So that's why this morning's Mass, which we thought was going to be 20 minutes, was about 26 minutes. You can blame the first reading was really long. I was always taught that you kind of tightened up the homily when the readings were long. <laughs> I don't know who to say yeah. that. <laughs> um, so uh, I heard Mr. Gimlet was um, saying a couple of the things that I usually say, which is great. We can, it, as I've learned from teaching seventh graders, it's always good to say things twice or three times to make sure everybody gets it. Um, kid, kids often come into this class with a couple of um, ideas or preconceptions or attitudes and some of them are accurate and some of them are not as helpful. One thing that they're probably thinking that is accurate is they're going to have another class second semester and so they're going to have a little more work to do. I know the classes that were in this block, Art, Drama, and Health, don't always have homework every night. Um, they might not have projects or writing assignments, so this class is like adding another class. So there will be a little more work. So that's just something that they need to be prepared for, kind of mentally prepared for. You know, maybe an extra 15 minutes of homework a night, another block in their planner, which I'm sure they're still using since September of writing down all their homework. Um, the attitudes that are less helpful, which um, Mr. Hamlet was mentioning before, are coming in either thinking, I've gone to CCD my whole life. I'm gonna, this is gonna be so easy. Every question I'm just gonna write down Jesus and I'm gonna get in there. Um, <laughs> that is not accurate, and we'll, we can tell you why in a second. Um, but the other attitude that some guys come in with is, I've never been in a Catholic school, I've never been to church, I don't know any of this, I'm never gonna be successful, and that's not really accurate either. We teach a church history curriculum because it's something that's not done in a lot of other places. So while we start with the life of Jesus and the apostles, which some guys might have some background knowledge on, after that, it's really something that's brand new to everyone. And I think, maybe I'm delusional, something that's really interesting to everyone. It's a story of people and places and events and history. So um, it kind of levels the playing field for everyone. And it's a lot of new material. So I've been teaching this course for to how long is we're paying around 12, yeah, 13. 13 years. Um, Ms. Solano is new to the department, but Father Nolan has taught the course before. So 
I was hoping maybe he could say a little bit about what we teach and why. Yeah. So it's the history of Christianity. It's really, if you think about it, it's kind of the history of uh, of the left, a lot of the history of Western civilization. So we start with the life of Jesus. We kind of look at Jesus' ancestors. We look back, and then we start with the uh, early apostles, the early Christians, martyrs. Uh, we talk about early monasticism. They're, they're pretty interesting. Well, they like the gory stuff. <laughs> they like all the different kinds of martyrdom. Uh, the Crusades, they find fascinating. But the, uh, but the monasticism, when we talk about monks and the life of monks, I think they find that kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. but, um, one of the best parts i found is uh, I've stopped at different times throughout the course and just handed out index cards and say you can ask any question, anything that, anything that we've talked about. So one time someone asked, um, does anybody really know where the Garden of Eden is? Well, that's a pretty good question. And then I skipped a few lines and said, when you played the cross, what position did you play? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the deepest questions. So, but I think that's, that's um, what we like about the course is that um, I think some of the students asked the best questions were students who were not part of the Catholic tradition. And it was great, and it, and it allowed students who have been going to, uh, you know, go for first community uh, formation, and formation now for confirmation, and allowed them to kind of think a little bit more about what their faith is all about and take a, a really good um, So I really enjoyed it. I Hi, I'm Karen Solano. I've been teaching in the high school. This is my third year teaching in the high school um, and my first time teaching in a group day, so I'm really excited about it. But my um, academic training prior to becoming a teacher was in history of Christianity, so I'm really excited to kind of dive into my own subject area, which I'm really fascinated about again. And I'm looking forward to working really closely with those two. And I think um, one way I think I can be really useful to your boys is I know the high school curriculum very well, so I can kind of think about how the seventh and eighth grade curriculum can really prepare them for the high school curriculum as well and help them get sort of the academic skills that we're looking for on the high school level. So I'm excited to be working with you guys and uh, yeah, helping, get, helping them along and teaching them about the story stuff. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about this level is that um, I know that everything we do here, if we don't get into a lot of detail because we are fitting a lot into a one-year course, I can sleep at night knowing that they're going to hit it again in the high school. Um, so a lot of the things students want to know more about or students have real curiosity about, we're lucky to be able to say, hey, we're not going to do this in this class because it's really a survey, but here's some places where you can do more research on your own or you'll learn more. You know, in the high school they take a class in world religions. So we touched briefly on the origins of Judaism, the origins of Islam, and ecumenism and interreligious dialogue, but we don't spend a lot of time on it because it's just not what our course is, but we know they'll have a whole course on it in high school. We begin looking at scripture and sort of the mechanics of what is the Bible and how you look things up in the Bible, um, and then we know in high school they take a scripture course and they get into all that in more detail. So it's a nice little survey, and I think it also helps them understand a lot of what we're doing at BC High, a lot of the customs and traditions and the things we do, they've started to learn about through Man Risa, but this gives us a chance to really answer those questions about, you know, what does this image in this stained glass window mean, or what does this thing that we do at Mass mean? All of the apps that we ask them to use, I haven't double checked, but almost every year we find that they're all apps they already have, so they'll use Quizlet, they'll use Notability, we usually use Pages for some writing assignments. Um, the iBook is one that we've produced here, so it's something that they'll just download from Canvas during the first couple weeks. There were two Kindle books that um, you should, when you came in over the summer to load everything out of the iPad, they should have been, there should have been instructions for how to get those Kindle books. You would have ordered them through Amazon, so the kids do need, uh, the first day of class we will double check, open the Kindle app, and make sure you're logged in and see if the books are there. And if they're not, I am not a Kindle expert, so if you have questions, Mr. Suter um, can send out something to all the seventh grade parents to make sure that that's there. When I ask students to explain Man Risa, they usually shout something like, you have to do three things, yeah. um, which is true. But if that's the story you've been hearing at home, maybe I can flesh that out for you a little bit. Because uh, religion is only a half a year course, we developed this uh, program called Man Risa, which gives them a chance um, to expand a little bit on 
sort of the application of some of these ideas and their own spiritual growth during the flex block. So over the course of the semester, students have to complete three, sort of, I would think of them as like campus ministry activities. So one in each of three different categories. Um, this semester was spirituality, worship, and Ignatian to help them learn more about what it means to be at a Jesuit school. And second semester is spirituality, worship, and then um, the last one is service and justice. So we give them lots of options. We give options that are geared towards kids in different language classes. We give options towards kids that are Catholic or non-Catholic. Um, we give options for kids who like quiet, for kids who like motion, for kids who like art. You know, we try to really have options in all different uh, areas of spirituality. Most students find one that they like and choose that. Some students leave it all for the last minute and get what they get the last week of the semester. But I'm meeting a lot of those students these last couple weeks. Um, so it's just a more um, hands-on way for them to explore some spiritual practices and start to think about, you know, as you grow closer to God and you grow in prayer in your own life, whatever that's going to look like, you have a really big menu of options for how to do that. Some people love the rosary, and some people love reflective prayer. Some love praying with the scripture. Some love um, going to liturgy. So you try out a bunch of things, and you see what fits. You've been involved for a while. Do you want to add anything about me, yeah. son? I, I like the, old, the ones at the end of the semester. <laughs> it's like there's a bunch of guys who need to still fill things out. So I've been taking them on a kind of a scavenger hunt throughout the building, uh, a whole different uh, religious kind of artwork and symbolism and then the chapel kind of like a show and tell uh, you know freedom trail <laughs> to the school it's great because usually these guys are kind of fidgety this group so they, they like kind of to be on the move but it also kind of helps everything kind of fit in like why what is that big labyrinth that we walk over each day or what is what's, what are these latin terms that we see or why do we keep saying that for others where does that come from so I really enjoy, I, I like the end of this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we really try, especially with seventh graders, to look at everything with fresh eyes and assume that this is all completely new to them, which for many of them it is. So it's really breaking everything down. And so what a lot of the seventh graders for their Ignatian Man race that did something that was just called Intro to the Jesuits, where we watched some videos and we did some brainstorming and we talked about what do these phrases mean, like um, AMDG and Man for Others and Finding God in All Things, and just sort of start from scratch. God willing, they'll have six years to explore what it means to be at a Jesuit school and what that culture is, but we don't take for granted that anyone, um, any 12-year-old comes in with an advanced knowledge of what AMDG means, which I think is reasonable. And one of our favorite students picked up one of the terms and came in with a <laughs> pencil, and I didn't like to give out my own pencil and pens and Say you know borrow from the neighbor and, and no one I mean, he was coming in off of that pencil. No one was giving him pencil. One other, he just said, "Is anybody gonna be a man for others and lend me a pencil?" And I was like, "That was pretty good." It was great to meet many of you. Thank you guys so much for coming in.